Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. We've got 16,000 Bitcoin coming out of the Grayscale Trust. That's coming up really soon. So we're going to check out the chart, update where we're at on the short term and the long term timeframes. And of course, get back to our fear and greed plan to see whether we have some buy signals at the moment or potentially do we see some coming up. So without further ado, make sure you hit that like button down below. It helps out the channel a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, plus TIA is launching today, TIA Lite. So go and check that out. Link to that is in the description. Huge discount for the first 500 new members, and that will be lifetime discounts. So uh, check that out after the video. Let's dive in. Let's recap the market caps. We're at 1.4 trillion, 1.43. Remember, we're still holding above our 50% level, so there is some stability in the market, which we've seen for about the last six weeks. Bitcoin's trading at around 34,500, ETH 2,260. That's gone up uh, around 15% over the last seven days. So we've seen some good move from Ethereum and on its BTC value as well. So Ethereum is increasing in value more than Bitcoin has been. So that's a good sign. We've also seen that on Cardano as well. And uh, we're seeing that across some of the altcoins, but I'll put that into a future video. So make sure you hit the subscribe and bell notification icon. We have talked about this for the last several weeks where altcoins could get a rally, but long term, if Bitcoin continues to move, then we're just expecting altcoins to continue to lose their Bitcoin value. Basically, we just want to reduce our risk. Like legendary investors say, you're going to need to reduce your risk. You want to keep as much as you can of the hopefully profits that you're making. So Bitcoin, 34,500. We'll have a look at that on our fear and greed plan, 29. So the market's fearful, but not extreme fear. And we're waiting for these levels of 15 or under to be adding to our position. So last time we added to the position was 23rd of June and then also 22nd of June, like we can see here, 22nd, 23rd. We bought Bitcoin at around 31,600 and 32,500. Now, I've got about another 10 or so hits that I want to take. But in the meantime, the longer the bear market goes on, the more money we can accumulate to then put into the market, into our investments, should the market fall back. So what we don't want to see is it just dip down and we don't have time to buy. If we've got all the cash, great. You know, it's a nice start. But what we're looking at here is Bitcoin value 34,500. Total invested so far is 10,000, meaning our uh, uh, gross at the moment is just short of the investment that we've put in and that leaves us at a negative half a percent. So this is just the patience game. This is the time that most retail cannot stomach. There's, if their money is doing nothing for a few hours or a few days, they get really skittish and want to leave the market. This is a time where bigger money is made. Imagine buying in March, April, May of 2020 when Bitcoin was 3800 through to about seven or $8,000. That's the time that I feel like we're in now. Even if we get down to the 20,000s, which we'll have a look at in a couple of news articles in a second, that's still the possibility that we could drop lower. So moving across to our first chart, we've got Bitcoin USD weekly time frame. just going back to the macro. Now, last week saw next to no action. There was not much happening on Bitcoin we literally did 1.7% increase from the week previously. However, the week previous, we had a good low put in with good volume as well. Now, I've got this purple box highlighted here. We're potentially looking at getting sucked back into this. Nothing to say that we will. Nothing to say we won't. At the moment, we've got some good lows at 28.29. All I'm saying is if we do go down and retest these levels of 28, 29,000, then I think this box is waiting for us. It's waiting to suck us back into the into the vortex, which is an area that uh, Bitcoin pretty much shot right through on the way up from 20 grand to its next top of 42 grand. You can pretty cleanly see that, that we only saw one, two and a half weeks of this zone between 20 and 28,000. So the market didn't really have a lot of time to play in that space and form a, form a base, form some sort of accumulation. Now, I'm also seeing this chart come up a fair bit. And I think this might be leading some people astray, looking at the Wyckoff accumulations. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to play out exactly like this. And I don't think they're even using the accumulation or the distribution in the correct way. This was accumulation, but it could be reaccumulation on the run up to the final markup into the distribution. And then we have a markdown. This could be 
redistribution, and then we get a further markdown. That is all part of Wyckoff as well. So I'm not sure whether this is doing the retail any sort of justice, but I'm sure you'll be seeing this. Just keep it in mind in case you do see this sort of chart and people trying to say, well, this is accumulation, this is distribution. So this is buying, this is the market going up, this is selling distribution, and then this is selling uh, the market going down because there's a lot of selling. And then this is all the buying again. And it could be more selling before we head further down. Reason being is that it's very easy to move these Bitcoin markets. Take this for an example. This is how much Bitcoin there is out there, long-term, invested, lost, and to be mined. So we know there's about 18.6 million Bitcoin. That's what's been mined. About 11.4 are invested. This just comes from uh, looking at where the Bitcoin is sitting in wallets. All right, so if we take this at face value, we got 11.4 invested, we got 3.7 lost, so not to be used again, or they're sitting in wallets which haven't been touched for five plus years. It's still 2.4 to be mined. That leaves us 3.5 million Bitcoin to be playing on the markets, to be trading between exchanges and wallets and used as payment, etc. So we're only 3.5 million actually out there. So you might see that the total circulating supply is 18.6. But really, there's only 3.5 million out there moving around. So if we were to take off another 3.4 million off the market, that means there's only 100,000 out there. And so that would really spike the price up. It's just like talking about Cardano and staking. You know, there's a whole lot staked in Cardano, which means it's all off the market. So whatever's playing in the market at the moment um, really moves the price a lot if there's a lot of demand. So that's what I'm looking at here, not to complicate it too much. What I'm looking for here is Wyckoff. The whole theory is we go backwards and forwards into uh, accumulation and distribution, okay? So what happens? What has to happen here is that whales have to buy up everything out there. They have to go through, take everything that they can, then they mark the price up. But before they do that, they test the market. They test to see whether there is any more selling pressure because they don't want to mark the price up before they're sure that all the sellers are gone, all the bears are gone. They don't want to mark it up. That's, what has, that's what's happening here. So they buy up heaps and this chart also doesn't show the volume. So I'll show you that on this chart here. You need to see the volume. It's the most important thing. That's what Wyckoff used all the time. So we've got the volume here. Look at it on the 19th of May. Live stream, market went crazy. We're all online for two and a half hours. It was absolutely nuts. Huge volume here, right? So the whales will be buying up on these days, all these big volume days, buying up heaps and heaps of heaps of Bitcoin doesn't mean that they will not sell any. And that happens across influencers, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. They they tend to talk about this as if all the whales are buying and they're not selling. Not true. It's not true. Because they need to have some to play with. They need to have some to play with the other whales. When the market goes up, okay, they're testing the market. They're taking it off the market. They're buying again as the market goes up. Then when we get to these little peaks here, see like these areas? Then they want to test the market. Are there any uh, buyers left or any um, sellers? Okay, so how many more sellers do we still have in the place? They're going to play with the market, start to sell onto the market. Is there enough buying to come through? Because they have to pretend to be the sellers, all right? Drop their Bitcoin, dump it, dump it, dump it. Is there enough buyers? Then they start to figure out where the buyers come in. All right, we found a level at 29,000. All right, let's buy it up a bit more again. So maybe they are making up numbers. 10,000 Bitcoin, right? Buy it all up. Okay, we get to the top. They have some in reserve to sell about 2,000 onto the market to try and push it down. Sell, sell, sell. I know 2,000 is not going to push the market, but we're just talking about this in terms of understanding how they are fluctuating the market. So now they're dumping some onto the market to test where the support is. Now they understand, all right, we've gone a bit lower. Maybe we need to go lower again because there's still more selling pressure coming in. So they mark it up again, have a bit of a play. Oh, we got a little higher bottom. Mark it up again. Let's see what's going on. Oh, we got another higher bottom, but the volume is dropping. So we're dying out here. Remember, this is also an Independence Day. So that adds another level of complexity to, to the game. So all we're seeing, waiting for here is to see what the whales are doing next. And will they be able to hold this level? Is there enough buying support coming in from... 29,000 through to about 33,000 or so where we've seen all of these these bottoms here come in. So is there enough buying uh, pressure to hold this market up? So they're going to keep testing these levels, all right? T keep testing as we go up. Now, the next thing to add to this 
is we have Grayscale. So Bitcoin is in danger of losing 30,000, the $30,000 level with Grayscale's big GBTC unlocking in two weeks. So they have, uh, we're, well, we're bracing for 16,000 Bitcoin worth of GBTC shares to, uh, to be unlocked in July. Could this dump the market? And what we've seen in the past, it, it, it has correlated with the April drop and, and also uh, the May drop coming through as well. So this is what we are looking out for and getting ready in case this unlock affects the market and drops a little further. In which case, I would suspect the whales would probably come back in, buy some more BTC on these massive dips. You can see it there. There's just huge volume. So should we get a move down into the mid or so 20s? buy it up, you're going to, you'll get some big volume through the bottom here. Then they'll be able to play the market again, push it back up, test these levels. Is there any resistance coming in? Does buying come back in really strong? So they'll have to start the action and start to sell some of theirs onto the market as well, just to test it and see what's going on. Then we'll uh, basically work out and see whether we head up from that point, break through any sort of resistance and then move on from there. This isn't confirmed. This is just how I'm seeing the market in case we get some sort of pullbacks in the event of a, uh, a Wyckoff pattern playing out as well. So in the event that we get some more accumulation at these lows or distribution, then we've got to see and prepare in case we get the market to fall a little further. So just as a recap, we are seeing pretty reasonable resistance at 36K. Will the whales continue to be able to mark this up because we have enough buying support? buying pressure to push it up or will we see more selling action come in at this point which will then drop us back down to retest these lows at around that 28,000 to 30,000 should we break down then probably we're going to see a quick spike into at least those sort of areas back at 24,000 and about you know 26 to 27,000 just to retest those levels ideally if we get that we get a nice clean out of these lows we get a push back above nice and quick closing above 28 grand, we're still happy days. We just got a nice clean out and that's what we want to see, which will then work over into our fear and greed plan. So we'd definitely see huge fear on the market, which means then we can buy some more Bitcoin and add it to our plan uh, that allows us to be purchasing at these lows so that we can ride it up in good time. Now, I still maintain that I think we're probably under the all-time highs for at least six months now. Initially, I thought about three months and I was saying that in April as we came off that high because there was solid three days down then we had 11 days down that was massive back in April receipts are on the channel you can watch those videos uh, and that's GAN analysis and of course Wyckoff analysis so now I bring that forward into where we are now in the Bitcoin market waiting to see what happens from this point I'm not bullish really bullish in the short term until we get our first close and crosses above that 36 grand level. And then we need to stair step our way out of these highs that are sitting around 42. And then we still need to play with this level here at around 47. So we need to really be getting above that, break through that, break through that. And then we can start to stair step our way out of this doldrum low. And you can sort of see that on the chart that we could get something that plays out like that. And then we have to retest the 60 grand level and so on. And I think that's going to take quite some time. I don't think this is going to be a July fix or a September fix or anything like that. This is going to take some time to get us back into this zone and then eventually break out the all-time highs. On a positive note, let's end on, on a positive note. SEC, US SEC Commissioner says Bitcoin ETF approval long overdue. SEC Commissioner, Commissioner Hester Pierce says that the regulator should have approved a Bitcoin exchange in the US a long time ago. She emphasized that it is not the SEC's job to approve or reject applications based on the merits of the underlying investment itself. People should make their own decisions whether to buy Bitcoin, said the Commissioner. So at least we've got some sort of process happening at the moment, starting to feel a little bit good about it. I'm not saying we're going to get one just yet, but at least there is some signs of it and it's coming through some Bitcoin news as well. So US SEC Commissioner says Bitcoin ETF approval long overdue. On top of that, mining, nearly two months on from the major news breaking that China would ban Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin mining in the country. Do you view this ban as uh, negative or a positive, net negative or a net positive for Bitcoin? Most people have been thinking that this is a positive long term. So that's a very good sign. And I definitely see it as a positive long term. We're breaking up all the stronghold out of China. Why would Chinese banning 
anything in the future make any difference to us. I think that just helps the space so much. We can finally get it all out of China. There's no more nonsense left anymore. China's done us a huge favor. And um, like a comment here thinks that, you know, China usually is long-term sighted. I, I don't, I think China just thinks about China and they want to ban their citizens from doing anything and uh, focus on them, forcing them to use their own uh, currency. So I'm, I don't think they think too much into Bitcoin. They just want their citizens to use the digital one and that's it. Restrict them all. The Chinese Communist Party is not interested in Bitcoin. They just want to control their people. All right, guys, that's my thoughts on Bitcoin. Long term bullish, short term, it's undecided, waiting for those levels to break or find support. We'll continue to follow it on the channel. Remember, uh, subscribe, bell notification icon, like the video up, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. TI Light is out. Go and check it out. And of course, if you're following the channel, you'll be updated with our fear and greed index as well. So as the market drops, this is our buying plan. So stick around. Let's get our portfolios built during this period of the market. So when we take off again, we are running, running beautifully. Imagine if this gets to 100 grand, our returns are looking pretty decent at that point. All right, guys, uh, thank you very much for your time on this video again. I'll catch you at tomorrow's video. Make sure you check out yesterday's video, Alts versus BTC, understanding how those charts work. Go and check that video out. I'll see you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.